Now we've looked at Ubuntu and Docker before, but what I want to quickly go into is if you had Docker running in a more production environment, obviously you'd like to keep your data, potentially make it faster, use RAID sets, all this kind of stuff. And we've also looked at uh, ZFS, so why not use the two together? So today we're going to basically install Docker and we're going to install ZFF, and we're going to go ahead and then look at how you would configure that in order to run the two together. Now this opens up a lot of opportunities for Docker in terms of we're able to have log drives etc to speed up the process when images are being uh, effectively rewritten to. Um, equally we are able to have RAID sets so we're able to get the performance of having multiple disks uh, as well as having the ability to say data protection so we're not worried about potentially losing uh, data as easily as we would normally. Now as you can probably see I installed the ZFS utilities slash Linux um, installation. This is the Ubuntu maintained package. We're going to use that today rather than uh, NFS Flux, uh, mostly because of support uh, under Docker. It's not supported to use uh, NFS Flux, so we're going to go ahead with the official package for now. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create some ZSS pools. We're nothing complicated here. We're going to create a simple mirror set, so a RAID 1 effectively, um, in order to uh, start the process. But first, since we're going to use also mount points, uh, we're going to clear out the default location for that mount point. So in this case, that's the Docker folder under the var lib directory. So as per let's call it best practices, we're going to back up that folder. So we're going to go ahead and just create a backup of the existing contents. Now you might be asking the question, why do I need to actually empty out the folder, which is what I'm about to do. Um, and the answer is actually pretty simple. Uh, if you are mounting a pool to a folder location, in particular one that already exists, uh, it needs to be empty. Otherwise what will happen is that when you run the pool mount command, in this case the, the switches, what it will effectively do is tell you that this is already in use and the directory is not empty and therefore you won't be able to proceed. So let's quickly have a, a look at what disks we've got because I need to try and remind myself um, which ones I'm going to use. So in this case I think I'm going to go for the E and F disks as they're two empty drives. Um, so as you can just see, highlight on screen. And I'm going to go ahead and create a simple mirror set, so a RAID 1 uh, array effectively using my ZSF pool. So first of all, I'm going to do the create, uh, name the pool. In this case, nothing imaginative. I'm going to call it Docker. Um, then I need to use the switch uh, R, uh, sorry, M, uh, in order to mount the directory correctly. So in this case, I'm now mounting uh, to the same folder location as you saw earlier. I'm using the mirror because I want to create a mirror set and then I'm using the drive letters so in this case that's F and E. Now hopefully and as you can see uh, no output messages in terms of errors so everything is fine to proceed and we can move on to configuring Docker. So now what we need to do with Docker in this case is tell it that we're going to use a different directory and a different uh, driver. So in this particular instance, the way to tell it that we're going to use a different driver effectively to address the NFS properly is we need to go into a folder called etc. Docker and then down into the daemon.json. Now if you have one existing, you should get the content pop up. If you don't, like I didn't because this is a clean install, you can start entering the following information. So first of all you need to tell it it's a storage driver, which the syntax is very simple. It's a storage driver. So storage dash driver. Uh, you then need to tell it what type of storage. So in this case we're going to use the ZFS, which Again, couldn't be simpler, we just simply type in ZFF and we close out the brackets because it's a JSON format. We then uh, save and close the file out. So simple enough so far. Now before we can use this we need to effectively uh, restart Docker. So in order to do this we're just going to restart the service, the Docker service that is, and then go ahead and uh, start it up. And it does help if I get the syntax correct. So let's try this again. And now start the service. 
Now, if you've got typos or other issues in the file, this is the part where it will tell you that it's not able to start. So now that we've started Docker, we're just going to do the Docker info. And from the Docker info, if I scroll back up, we should be able to see that the storage driver type is ZFS, which is all good. Now you can also see that I've got a pool error while getting pool information. Don't worry about this. This is currently a known issue. Um, I'm hoping it'll be fixed soon, but in general, don't worry about it. You can get the pool status a different way. Um, and that's using the uh, Z pool uh, list and that tells you whether it's healthy or not. So if we just look at the list status, you can see status is fine, pool is healthy and online, but I also want to see the amount of data that's allocated. So we've got a folder structure that was created when Docker started writing to it and it's currently using 2.35 megabytes. Now when I pull down a image for Docker, and this should be a straightforward one, so I'm going to pull down um, Pi Hole. Uh, not the biggest image, not the smallest either, it's about 280 odd meg if I remember rightly. And what we're going to do is list again the Z pool afterwards, and we'll be able to see how much of that pool is now being consumed. So if we do a quick list, uh, prove that we a, have the image downloaded. So we can see our image is there, it's uh, 283 meg, and if I look at the Z pool, and remember we only had two or so meg used, we can see effectively we're 290 meg. So our data has been put onto our Z pool as per design. Now this is not the only way of doing this, there is another way. So if we go back to our original JSON file one more time, and it does help if I put the directory in correctly, Instead of uh, mounting to the same location as the default installation of um, Docker, you could also do it this way. You can use the data-root and then specify the location of the data folder. So in this case, I've taken the liberty of creating another pool called my Docker. And we're going to simply say that that's the data pool directory. So we do the same thing as we did earlier. We simply restart after. we we'll just prove quickly that the pool exists. There it is. And we restart Docker. And when you do the Docker info, you're able to effectively output whether the data directory that it's using, the default one, is that new one. So if we stop Docker, and then we go ahead and start Docker, and then we quickly do the docker info, we should be able to see that our new data directory, in this case the my docker, is now there. So as we can see, if we scroll a little bit, and there it is, the root directory is now my docker. And that is another way of changing it, because you don't need to necessarily mount under the default uh, installation directory. Now hopefully you liked this video, if you did give us a thumbs up, if you didn't give us a thumbs down, and subscribe for more content.